This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life. Hello everybody, it's Paul Neeson with the Raw Life Health Show. Thank you for checking out this video. Today I want to answer one of the most common questions I get on a regular basis, and that is, where do you get your protein on a raw vegan diet? And, or even where do you get your protein on a vegan diet? Now, many people watching I know what a vegan is, but some people do not. Uh, I would say that because many people ask me, what is the difference between a vegan and a vegetarian? And if you're watching this, I assume you know the difference. But a vegan is excluding all animals and animal products. So it, it would seem, where can you get your protein if you're not eating animals? Because we have a uh, a, a precomposed thought that we need to get our protein from animals. It's the only way we can get protein. It's the only way we can build muscle and it's the only way we can be healthy. And, and that, that is, uh, not only is that not true, if you get too much protein, that's what creates so much sickness and disease in the body to begin with. Too much of anything, but too much protein is so common today. I fell into this trap when I was younger. Uh, I would try to get at least one or two grams of protein per my body weight. At that time, I weighed about 150 to 160 pounds. So I was shooting to get 300 grams of protein every single day. My result, I ended up with an inflamed bowel, inflammatory bowel disease, also known as ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Now, that wasn't the only thing that caused it, but it was definitely contributing to it. Now, uh, today, I'm a raw vegan, and I don't count how much protein I'm getting and how much fat I'm eating and how many calories I'm eating on a regular basis, but uh, just... Answering the question, where do I get my protein on a raw vegan diet? Well, often I give the example to people, well, where does a, a horse or an elephant, who do, they don't eat animals and they're big and strong and fast, where do they get their protein and their muscle from? And some people would say, yeah, but you're talking about a horse or, or an animal or an elephant. You're not talking about a human being. A human being is different. Well, yes and no. They might have different stomachs and they might digest food different than us. A horse can eat grass and hay, which we would have a very difficult time consuming uh, like the horse does and because of the way our uh, physiology is built and the stomach is built and everything else. But when you look at the way we are created, we are created to eat uh, uh, fruits off the tree and berries and, and, and possibly even nuts and seeds. But we're not built to eat animals. Just because we can do it doesn't mean it's the ideal. We can get away with it. And I will admit, if you're getting animals from a healthy source that aren't, uh, that aren't uh, drugged up by the companies that sell them, there's a lot of nutrition in those animals, but what comes along with that is a lot of waste. And it's the lowest quality of nutrition because your body has to work so hard to get it. So uh, the, the reason why people look at animals as a good source of protein is it comes out to amino acids. The animals have a, a complete set of essential amino acids that our body needs that we cannot get on our own. See, the body will produce amino acids all day long, but there's there's some amino acids that the body cannot produce without getting it from food. That's why they're called essential, the essential amino acids. Now, can these amino acids be found in non-animal foods? Absolutely. But the reason why animal foods are commonly thought of as a complete source or, or, or good source of protein is because they have the complete set of amino acids that the body needs in one source. But it's the lowest quality since we're working so hard to get it. Now, uh, in the vegetable world, there are so many uh, amino acids and so many different fruits and vegetables that if you eat a good variety of fruits and vegetables, you're getting the highest quality of, uh, of, of the, these amino acids. And this is what really builds the protein in the body. And now the question comes, is there a source of animal food uh, or vegetable food that has a complete protein in one source, that has all the essential amino acids in one source? And uh, I could say yes, but it's not as easily accessible to us today. And uh, I think one of them is more, become more accessible to us today is the moringa leaf or moringa powder. Uh, from my understanding, that has the essential amino acids that we need, and it's wonderful. But how many leaves are you going to eat to make sure you're getting what you need? Now, broccoli, on the other hand, uh, is a tremendous amount, has a, a great amount of protein. But again, uh, it doesn't have the complete set of amino acids that our body needs. One of the common foods that people consume on a raw vegan diet to get many of those amino acids is hemp seeds. And I have some hemp seeds right here. And hemp seeds are a, a, a wonderful source of these essential amino acids or these amino acids that we cannot necessarily get from, from uh, other vegetable sources. So is it a complete source of protein? No. But does it have some amino acids that we can't get in a good majority of other uh, uh, vegetables? Yes. And the same thing is for other nuts and seeds. So nuts and seeds are also thought of as a good source of 
of a veg vegetable protein, but they're actually not the best source because nuts in general are don't digest easy and they're not the, 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 the superior food. But the grasses, the greens uh, are a wonderful source of protein. We need the greens. Look at a gorilla or, uh, or an ape or, again, horses, how they eat the greens and they have all this protein in their bodies. That's wonderful. One thing I want to uh, recommend people not get caught up on if you're going on a raw vegan diet, which I made the mistake of, of getting caught up on is, is these protein powders. And basically, on a raw vegan diet, what it consists of is all, a whole bunch of nuts powdered down. Hemp powder or, or, or Brazil nut powder or something else. In certain situations, it's a supplement and it's okay if you can't get the real thing. But get the real thing. Get the Brazil nuts. Get the hemp seeds. And, and, and it's not that bad if it's grounded down into a powder. But the protein powders that many... Uh, veg vegetarian companies are using, not necessarily raw vegetarian, but vegetarian companies, that is the problem. So a raw protein powder wouldn't be as bad, and in certain cases, depending on your diet, uh, might be acceptable. It's the, veg the vegetable, the vegetarian protein powders that you go in the store that are filled with soy and, and other GMO products, and they're just corn, and, and they're just so many fillers in there. And it's just really difficult for the body to, to do anything with that. So uh, I, I definitely recommend if you do desire not to eat it from the food and you get it from a, uh, from a vegetable source, uh, a powder, then get the raw vegan vegetable powder. Another thing you could do is uh, you could take supplements. Now, I'm not one to take protein supplements because I get my protein from my food. You don't need to eat a lot of food to get what you need. You know, food's not building muscle. Working out and exercising, that's what builds muscle. And that's what we need to understand. And uh, you can be fit and you can be healthy on a raw a vegan diet. I meet people that uh, try to lose weight on a raw vegan diet, and they do. But I meet some people that try to put on weight on a raw vegan diet, and they, they do. But a lot of people have trouble with that. How do they maintain weight or put on weight? And uh, I just know what health is. And uh, for me, I know what works best. And uh, if I do put on any weight, I want it to be muscle and not fat. So I'm not going to do things like eat a big heavy meal of, uh, of nuts and seeds right before going to sleep because that will put weight on my body. Uh, but no, I want to be uh, fit. I don't want to be fat. So, uh, so I make sure that I, I get enough exercise. I eat at the right times and I, I don't overeat. But I also don't want to undereat. I want to make sure I'm giving my body what it needs. And I take the appropriate supplements that I need to assure that I'm getting what I need. And, uh, but when it comes to protein, it's not something that, uh, that uh, has to be an issue. I mean, I have uh, did blood testing over the years with myself and other raw vegans. And I've seen them have issues like B12 issues, which we could discuss in another video. It's not necessarily related to being a vegan. It's more necessarily related to our digestion and also what our sources of the B12. But uh, there are other issues they, uh, people might have, uh, some low testosterone and and maybe D, uh, vitamin D might issues with that. So these are other issues, but protein is very rarely an issue on somebody on a raw vegan diet when they take their blood work. Oh, you have too little protein or your protein's low or, or something like this. Iron, sometimes if you're not getting a complete diet and getting red foods in your diet possibly, but not protein, folks. So uh, give it a try. Now, some people that are working out, they might say, well, I'm used to going to a gym and lifting up so much weight. And when I went on a vegan diet, I couldn't lift as much weight. Well, you know, your weight is behind the weight of your lifting. And a lot, of course, uh, somebody who uh, weighs much more might be able to possibly lift much more. But when you think about pound for pound how much stronger you are on, on, on a diet that's going to keep you fit and healthy, and how much more you can do and how much longer you can go, that makes a tremendous difference. So we need to consider that pound for pound, not just how much we're, we're lifting or not lifting or anything. Uh, last thing I'll say is I know a fellow who's uh, uh, stuck in that bodybuilder menta mentality where they just needed to maintain their muscle and have big muscles and, and, and just look big uh, like this world society just uh, dictates we need to. And I, I was explaining to them how the raw vegan diet can keep them fit and they went on it and they were doing great. They were feeling better. They overcame some illnesses and diseases and they were doing great, but they didn't like the way they looked. They said they looked too skinny. I mean, this per person looked wonderful, just fine. And anyway, he decided to go back to eating the meat and, and go back to doing those types of things and, and protein powders and so on. So he got back to look where, the way he wanted to look. But uh, he was probably uh, the m most fit person in the hospital because he went back to the hospital.
So we got to be serious about this. This is our health. And we want to look at the long run, not just the short run. What's going to keep us healthy and for how long? And if you're looking for uh, just eating a raw food diet just for a reason of vanity, like losing weight or something else, it will get you there. But the key is, and what we need to look at is longevity and health. And that should be the top of the list. And we shouldn't be listening to other people saying we look a certain way. We should look at the results. Are we doing better? Or are we not in terms of our health, our overall health? So if you have any comments or questions, post them below the video. I appreciate you taking the time to watching today. You can see more videos on my website, rawlifehealthshow.com. Thank you very much. Have a great day and a great raw life. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life, brighten up your life.